Hello, everyone. Today I'm going to present our work, Transpin Leap, Efficient Transcendental Functions for Processing in Memory Systems. This work has been presented at ISPAS 2023. Let's start with an executive summary. Processing in memory promises to alleviate the data movement bottleneck. However, current real-world PIM systems have very constrained hardware, which results in limited instruction sets. This causes the difficulty or even the impossibility of computing complex operations such as transcendental functions and other hard-to-calculate functions such as a square root. These functions are important for modern workloads, for example, activation functions in machine learning applications. We propose Transpin Leap the first library for transcendental and other hard to calculate functions on general purpose PIM systems. Transpin Leap contains cordic based and loop based methods for trigonometric functions, hyperbolic functions, exponentiation, logarithm, square root, etc. The source code is publicly available in our repository. And we have implemented the first version of Trans Transpin Leap for the admin PIM architecture and evaluate its methods in terms of performance, accuracy, memory requirements, and setup time. We also evaluate Transpin Leap with three real world workloads Black Skull, Sigmoid, and Softmax. The outline of uh, this presentation. First of all, we will provide some background on uh, processing in memory and transcendental functions. Then we will describe the implementation of Transpin Leap. And finally, we will go with the evaluation. So let's start from the beginning. Processing in memory is a computing paradigm that advocates for memory-centric systems or systems where there are processing elements near or inside the memory arrays. PIM architectures are becoming a reality with AppMem, Samsung, SK Hynix, Alibaba, and these PIM systems have some common characteristics. First, there is a host processor, a CPU or a GPU with access to a standard main memory and PIM-enabled memory. PIM-enabled memory contains multiple processing elements, and these processing elements run at only a few hundred megahertz and have a small, a small number of registers or a small cache and scratch pad. PIM processing elements may need to communicate via the host processor. This is how a state-of-the-art PIM system looks. You can see the standard main memory, the host processor, and the PIM-enabled memory containing memory banks and PIM cores. In our work, we use the AppMem PIM architecture, where the PIM cores are general purpose processing cores called DRAM processing units or DPUs. They are fine grained multi thread and run up to 24 PIM threads, and they support 32 bit integral arithmetic. But multiplication and division are emulated as well as floating point operations. Each DPU has access to its own DRAM bank that is called NRAM and its own scratch pad that is called WRAM. How do we calculate or how can we calculate transcendental functions in a PIM system? There are three possible alternatives. The ideal one would be to have a special unit uh, in the memory side, a transcendental unit that calculates the transcendental functions. And every time that the PIM kernel needs to compute some transcendental functions, it offloads the computation to this nearby transcendental unit. However, this is unrealistic because of the limited hardware availability that we have in PIM systems. So a more realistic scenario, good stop the PIM kernel execution, good move data to the CPU to compute the transcendental function. And then after that, the uh, control may return to the PIM kernel for uh, uh, subsequent execution. This is really realistic, but the problem with this is that there is data movement between the memory and the CPU back and forth. So another alternative could be to implement the transcendental functions by software and execute them in the PIM core. And this way we can save a significant amount of time from the data movement between the PIM side and the CPU side. And this is basically what we propose in Transpin Leap, an open source library with cortic and loop based methods for trigonometric functions, hyperbolic functions, exponentiation, logarithm, etc. So let's take a look at how Transpin Leap is implemented. There are different ways of or different methods to calculate transcendental functions like Taylor approximation, min, minimax polynomials, Cordic, and LUT. In Transpin Leap, we choose Cordic and LUT because they don't require multiplications or not as many multiplications as other methods. Cordic is an iterative algorithm that uses bit shifts, additions, and table lookups. In its rotation mode, Cordic computes the function value of an input angle by rotating a vector iteratively. The rotation is done by multiplying the vector uh, with a matrix, and the matrix represents the rotation angle, which it decreases in each iteration. Fatsy lookup tables, or LUTs, return an approximate output fx for each input x. To implement a lookup table, we need an address function ax that returns the address to access the input for each given, um, uh, to access the um, output of the lookup table uh, for each given input x. 
the table returns the entry for the corresponding uh, address for as the approximation of the output result for the input X. To generate the loot, we also need a helper function, which is a pseudo inverse of the address function. The one way of improving the accuracy of loots is using interpolation. In this case, we need to read two entries of the table and then apply this formula to calculate the uh, estimated value. Uh, let's take a look at how TranspingLib implements Cordic-based methods. TranspingLib contains Cordic implementation of, of trigonometric, uh, hyperbolic functions, uh, exponentiation, logarithm, and a square root. We use the same function as an example. From the input, the first thing we do is uh, doing a range reduction, which basically uh, means uh, limiting the inputs to those ranges that are really meaningful for the specific function. In the case of the sine function, something between zero and two pi represents all possible will represent all possible outputs. Next, we convert from fixed point representation to, to from floating point representation to fixed point representation, which is natively supported by the AppMP architecture. Next, we can reduce the range further because in sign, the values of the output uh, repeat in every quadrant. So we restrict the range to zero, uh, to, from zero to pi over two, and we keep, we store the quadrant for the uh, specific input. Next, we apply the Cordic algorithm, and this way we obtain an output between zero and one. And next, using the quadrant that we previously stored, we compute the final output between minus one and one. Finally, we uh, move back from fixed point to floating point representation. For the loop-based methods, we implemented several different methods. The first one is called multiplication-based loot or mLoot. And in this, in this case, this method provides regular spacing between table entries, and the address function looks like this. Observe that we are multiplying with by k, which represents the loot density. Uh, if uh, we want to map an interval 0, 5 to a 12th entry lookup table, uh, this table, this plot here, um, 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 ex expresses the density in terms of the input. The range, as you can see in the x-axis, is from 0 to 5, and the density in all these uh, intervals is 2.4, which is what corresponds to this uh, specific example. It's a regular spacing between the uh, table entries. The second possibility is the LDX-based loot or LDOOT. In this case, we replace the multiplication by a multiplication by a power of two because multiplication we know that is cheaper if um, if we do it with bit shifts. Uh, to implement this LDOOT, we had to implement the LDX um, in function and for the admin PIM architecture, and the address function looks like this. It's uh, less precise, but it avoids multiplication. As you can see, density is lower in this case because it needs to be a power of two. <clears throat> The third possibility is the direct float conversion based lookup table, or DLOOT. In this case, we are taking advantage of the natural nonlinearity of the floating point um, uh, representation, and we generate the address using the last m bits of the exponent and p bits of the mantissa. The result is a piecewise linear density of 2 to the n steps of 2 to the p addresses. The problem with this uh, um, DLOOT is that it has no entries between 0 and the smallest. Uh, the smallest exponent. To solve that issue, we propose a combined method that is called direct float conversion plus LDX base loot or DL loot. In this case, what we are doing is using an L loot between zero and the smallest exponent and a D loot for larger input. We also use, or Transpin Lib also uses another combined method that is called Cordic plus loot or Cordic plus L loot. In this case, we replace the first few iterations of Cordic with a lookup table. And this prov uh, provides a flexible trade off between computing cost, table size, and precision. This is the entire list of supported functions in the current distribution of TranspinLib. As you can see, we implemented all methods for the assigned function. And then based on our preliminary analysis, we provide the most suitable methods for each of the other supported functions. Now let's take a look at the evaluation. We evaluated uh, two systems. It's an admin based pin system with 2,500 pin cores and a dual socket Intel Xeon CPU. Uh, we first evaluate uh, TranspingLib with micro benchmarks to measure the performance evaluation. We measure the execution cycles, the accuracy evaluation. Here we use the root mean square absolute error with respect to the CPU with the standard math library. 
Then we also uh, measure the setup time, but this is the time that is needed to generate, for example, lookup tables in the whole CPU and transfer them to the pin site, and the memory consumption, which is the total uh, memory occupied by tables and variables allocated in the DRAM bank or a PIM, or a PIM core. Uh, in uh, our paper and in this presentation, we use sign as a representative function. At the end, you will see also an evaluation for real world benchmarks, black holes that uses exponentiation, logarithm, square root, and also the cumulative, cum cumulative normal distribution function that we also implement in Transpin Leap, sigmoid, and softmax. So let's take a look at the performance results. We measure the execution cycles for an accuracy range between two to the minus, 10 to the minus four and 10 to the minus nine. Uh, the loop-based versions can place the lookup table in either the DRAM bank or the scratch pad. Observe that the solid line corresponds to the DRAM bank, the NRAM, and the scratch pad is the dotted line. One first observation is that the performance of lookup table based methods is independent of the accuracy. Basically, the accuracy depends on what's the size of the lookup table. And in, in terms of performance, uh, it's uh, similarly costly to access a smaller or a larger table. So that's why the performance is flat for these uh, lookup table based methods. Another observation is that the execution cycles for these methods depend on the number of multiplications. For example, the interpolated M loot is the, more co the most costlier, uh, is the most costly because it uses two floating point multiplications. Uh, the non-interpolated M loot and the interpolated L loot use only one FP multiplication, and the non-interpolated L loot uses no floating point multiplication. That's why it's the fastest, it's the fastest because it's non-interpolated, uh, its um, accuracy is not that high. Regarding the fixed point version, we observed that the uh, interpolated fixed point L loot doubles the performance of the interpolated L loot. The reason for that is that the fixed point multiplication is faster than the uh, floating point multiplication. For cortic based methods, with the first observation, as we could expect, is that accuracy increases with each iteration because the, for more iterations of the algorithm, the uh, more accurate the method will result. Um, one uh, thing that we observe as well is that Cordic plus load runs faster than Cordic as it replaces the initial iterations with an end loot query. At some point, both uh, loot based and cortic based methods do not improve ac accuracy anymore, and that happens around 10 to the minus 9. The, the, in the reason or intuitive reason for that is the limitation of the precision of floating point numbers themselves. And we can also observe that there is little benefit from placing the lookup tables either in the scratch pad or in the DRAM bank. So key takeaway number one, interpolated l -loot methods offered the best trade-off in terms of performance and accuracy. Next, setup time, which is, can also impact the decision of what method to use, because depending on the method, the setup time will be longer or shorter. For example, for loot-based methods, the setup time increase with the loot size. This makes sense because we need to populate the lookup tables in the host and then transfer them uh, to the memory side. Cordic uh, instead has flat setup times. So Cordic methods can provide higher overall accuracy, uh, including the setup time and the pin kernel time than loot based methods when the total number of transcendental functions in a workload is low. Is low. You can check uh, the paper for more details. So key takeaway number two is that Cordic based methods are preferable when a pin kernel needs to execute just a few transcendental functions due to their low setup time in the host CPU. Now let's take a look at the memory consumption results in bytes. Here, as you can see, uh, we observe that the accuracy of the interpolated LLOT methods is limited by the available memory. And the memory consumption of Cordic methods does not increase exponentially. Interpolation is a good way of increasing accuracy without increasing the lookup table size that much. So key takeaway number three, Interpolated LLOOT methods offer a good trade-off in terms of accuracy, execution cycles, and memory consumption. However, CORDIC and CORDIC plus LLOOT methods are recommended for applications that require high accuracy where the available memory is limited because it's needed for, uh, for example, for large data sets. You can find more details in the paper. Finally, let's go with the real world benchmark results. We use as baselines one and two 32, uh, one and 32 CPU cores and a PIM baseline with polynomial approximation. These are the results for black skulls. And one thing we can observe is that the transpin leap versions uh, are between five and 12 times faster than the PIM baseline with polynomial approximation. We can also observe that the LDUT uh, fixed point LDUT is 92 
is 92 times, sorry, it's 92% faster than the 32-thread uh, CPU baseline. For sigmoid and softmax, we observe that first, transpin leap methods are faster than the polynomial uh, approximation. However, the 32 CPU cores are faster. The good thing is that transpin leap can save uh, data movement from executing the activations in the host CPU. For sure, you remember this plot in the beginning, and that's the key takeaway number four. Transpin leap can reduce data movement from pin cores to the CPU for applications running on the pin cores. And as a result, the execution of transcendental functions in the pin core, according to our estimations, could be uh, between six and eight times faster than the execution on the host CPU. Uh, you can check more details in the archive version of our paper and also the source code that is uh, publicly available in our repository. To conclude, again, the executive summary, processing in memory is promising to alleviate the data movement bottleneck. However, it's very constra constraining hardware and this limits the instruction set and makes difficult or even impossible to compute some complex operations such as transcendental functions and other hard to calculate functions that are important for modern workloads. Transpin Leap is the first library for transcendental and other hard to calculate functions on general purpose pin systems. It contains cortic based and loop based methods and the source code is publicly available. We implemented the first version of Transpin Leap for the AppMemP architecture and evaluate these methods in terms of performance, accuracy, memory requirements, and setup time. And we also show an evaluation with three real workloads. If you want to learn more about real world processing in memory architectures, I can recommend you to join the ISCA uh, tutorial that we will organize this year. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found this talk interesting. <laughs>